Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We're going to do an unboxing today of something that Compass Games was kind enough to send me. This is their new release, Jacobite Uprising. This is a Commands and Colors Tricorn release. Uh, but, and I didn't know this until I looked into it, it is actually a standalone release. You do not need Commands and Colors Tricorn to play it. Um, so this is in a large three inch, good three inches here, heavy um box uh this looks like this one was made in china um and we have uh two players as are all commands and colors games except for the, the like the big epic stuff uh playing time 60 to 90 minutes which sounds about right complexity they put it at complexity six out of ten um unless and i haven't looked at the other commands and colors tricorn release but unless it is co considerably more complicated than that then i think that sounds really high and solitaire suitability uh four out of ten which i think also sounds a little high i'd probably put it at three um designed by creation and development by richard borg development by paul miller and stan oyen and graphic design and artwork by nadir alfara so let's open her up and see what we have that's not cooperating with me today. Okay, here we go. It's been a long day. Uh, we have spent the day playing another Compass Games release, actually. Stellar Horizons. Box opens nice and smoothly. It's very nice. Thick box. Very thick box. Okay, we have a thing here that says, Jacobite Rising dice are correct. The rules are wrong on color of cavalry and infantry. Okay, okay. So a couple things. Uh, first of all, packed in the box, they gave me this, which I, I take to be a scenario card, the corrected scenario card. So let's bear in mind that that showed up. Um, they, they gave us uh, what looks like embossed dice. There's eight embossed dice here. Uh, these are possibly not the nicest dice I have ever seen, but I would prefer them greatly over the um, dice that like the dice you have to put stickers on that are in some commands and colors releases which I'm not a big fan of uh, we have a ton of blocks okay so these are the small blocks these are the big blocks these are more small blocks these are big blocks okay we have so tons of blocks all right so we have a big pack of cards and a small pack of cards these are all should all be the command cards and then we have um, a knight a note about Killer Cranky. Of course, the Jacobite Uprising, there was actually multiple Jacobite Uprisings. One presumes that this is the big one, the big famous one with Bonnie Prince Charlie, um, where supporters of Bonnie Prince Charlie uh, sought to restore his father, uh, James, or in Latin, Jacobus, to the English throne. Um, all right, so we have... All right, a couple things. So we have uh, a rule book, the Jacobite Rising rule book, which includes, uh, looks like the scenarios as well. This is a 40 page book, um, heavy magazine stock, uh, fairly glossy, not the glossiest thing I've ever seen. Nice big print. Um, this is a pretty mature game series at, at this point. So I know that some people find commands and colors relatively simplistic. Um, I think that's true, but I also actually think it's relatively fun to play. So, Clan Chiefs. So every one of these games has, uh, and there's there's a Commands and Colors game on every conceivable topic at this point. From the uh, U.S. Civil War, to Samurai Battles, to World War I, to World War II, to uh, Spaceships, to, there's a fantasy one. Um... I'm miss. There's Commands and Killers Ancients and Napoleonics, both of which I have played and own and like, um, and a variety of other things. And then we get to the scenario. So it looks like uh, it looks like this extra card is actually just additional scenarios. Okay, and then Kill a Cranky, 27 July. One terrain tile is slightly hidden from view. It's the third row from the top of the diagram. Yeah, okay, I see what... So this is a clarification that this is a hill under this unit right here. That's what that's all about. So we'll put that right there. So this is just more scenarios. So it looks like we have 16 scenarios. Um, Killer Cranky is one I've actually heard of. Dunkled, Cromdale, Alness. I'm not centering this very well. I apologize. We're, we're, we're still learning how to work with the mat here. Uh, Sheriff Muir. Muir? I don't know. Glenn Shiel. Preston Pans, Clifton, 
uh, Inveruri, Falkirk, not that Falkirk, different Falkirk, uh, Culloden, which I've heard of. And we get some historical background, victory, victory conditions, some battle notes, things like that. Okay, so we have that. Let's put this one back in the box for now. We have two player aid cards, and this is pretty much, you're going to run the entire game off of this thing pretty much. It looks like there is a fair amount of uh, terrain detail here. Then um, this one will, the unit reference chart, this is like how all the units work. Okay. And we have uh, cards. Let's, uh, let's open the cards up and take a look at them. We're going to have to, uh, I think, Ziploc bag these on the way back in because I am out of those silicone bands. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So we have two different kinds. Okay, hold on a second here. We have government command cards. We have Jacobite command cards. And then we have Jacobite rising command cards. So this is different than what I have seen in previous Commands and Colors games. And these are these are pretty striking, I can tell you that. Of course, we have the Cross of St. Andrews here. So we have a, a, a big, big stack of cards. The card quality, uh, pretty thick. Um, they don't feel... So, sometimes, there's a couple older GMT games. Napoleonic Wars is one of them, where the cards feel so thick that they feel like they're going to chip. These don't feel like that, but they're pretty thick. Um, <clears throat> then we get this other little envelope of cards here, which is just probably the few remaining they couldn't slip in. And these are all the regular command, all regular command cards, which are all like special ability type things. Okay. So yeah, that looks like, uh, I'm not seeing the typical, like, uh, okay. Yeah. So we have the typical, Commands and colors, command cards where you assault left, um, probe right. It looks like, at a glance, I'm not the world's greatest expert on the commands and color system by any possible definition, uh, but it looks like uh, this does some new things with the commands and color system. I haven't played Tricorn. Um, I have played Memoir 44, and I have and have played and own Napoleonics and Ancients. Uh, I honestly did not have a good time any time I played Memoir. <clears throat> I know a lot of people like it, and it's entirely plausible that I was just bitten by bad scenarios multiple times. Um, but I do like Ancients and Napoleonics. Um, so we have a whole bunch of cards here. Now, just putting those in sort of an order. Sorry to keep you waiting while we're doing that. And then we have, let's do this first. So we have the giant stack of stickers that we're going to have to sticker the blocks with. So sticker stock looks, it's super glossy, um, but offhand it looks really clear. Um, so I don't know that glossy is a problem necessarily. Uh, and we have like five or six sheets. I'm trying not to wreck them. They, they, these feel pretty delicate. We have five sheets of these stickers. That's a lot. Um, and then we have a pack of the terrain tiles. Uh, trying to get this open without, obviously, preferably without wrecking anything. There we got these. Now these will be on a heavy, uh, like cards board type cardstock. And that is indeed, that does feel like, oh, and look at that. <laughs> Complete collapse. Okay, so punching these won't be a problem. Um, like a tap, and they did literally all all the sheets just fell apart. Wow. Okay, so we're gonna have to put this away. And then we have presumably this is is it York or Lancaster that's the white rose? Um, does that even apply here? No, that should be the wrong period. But presumably the the white rose is England, and the cross of Saint Andrews is Scotland. So I apologize that you are getting me taking the game apart during the unboxing video, but it kind of took itself apart here, actually. Um, so you're not going to have any problems punching the terrain tiles. And you've got like rough terrain tiles and little hillock terrain tiles and forest terrain tiles and whatever this is. It, it could be a lake. It could be a fen of some kind. Uh, it could be a bog. They love their bogs up in Scotland. 
So it's going to take me longer to put this back together than it did to do the unboxing video. Oh, okay, cool. So we have the rose, and then on the back of that we have... Do we have, like, War of the Roses battles here? Is this, what's this red versus white business? I don't know. I don't know enough about this period to, to tell you. But you got British versus Scottish. These are probably your victory uh, tiles. So, a ton of these tiles. Let me push this out. This would have worked had I not exploded the terrain tiles. And then we have a board. It's a mounted board. Um... I would feel displeased uh, if I had bought a Commands and Colors game without a mounted board because I think it's the kind of it's just the kind of game that really really wants a mounted board. Um, and it's plain, but you're going to put the terrain tells on it. Um, it's an eight panel board. You've got your right, center, left um, finish is quite a matte finish, and there's a a rather subtle compass watermark, which I think is actually pretty cool. Um, in the background, I'm not sure how well you're able to see that, particularly with this goofy camera angle that I have going on here. Sorry about that. But uh, you can see the compass watermark right here. I don't know how well that's going to come out on the video. Uh, nice mounted board, not quite the size of the box. So, um, I am going to be hard pressed to get all this stuff back together in the box. Um, you're getting a lot here with Jacobite Rising. A lot of scenarios, um, a lot of quality components, um, a lot of cards. Uh, looks like it's more cards than you get, than I got, say, in Napoleonics. Uh, this goes, I have, I'm not even sure where I'm going to start putting this away. So um, we may get this to a table at some point relatively soon. And if we do, I will absolutely uh, provide you with a report on how it goes. I am inclined to be optimistic uh, because I think the system is fundamentally pretty good and pretty fun to play uh, and in your light sort of light war game space. Um, also a pretty good crossover game to, to play with non-war gamers. I know non-war gamers that will play uh, Commands and Colors. Um, so I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank your Thank you for your patience in putting up with the goofy camera angle. We're, we're still trying to get the hang of centering the mat correctly and getting the right camera angle with the boom arm and all that other stuff. So I appreciate that. Appreciate the watch. Uh, please give the video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. Um, please subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to get notified when new content comes out. And if you don't mind, um, if you're so inclined, please click on the Patreon link in the video description. Thanks again for watching. Uh, there will be a page uh, link in the video description to uh, buy Jacobite Rising on the Compass Games website too. So check that out if you're interested in the topic. Uh, this might, and you want a light war game on the topic, this looks like uh, a pretty good place to start actually. Um, a lot of interesting stuff here. So uh, thanks again for watching. And until next time, happy wargaming.